Now we move to a very important section of EJB that is transaction management. Transaction is basically group of operation which should be performed as a whole. You cannot just perform one or few steps of the operation. All should be performed as a whole. So the typical example given for a transaction is suppose you want to transfer some money from one account to another. So it usually involves two operations subtracting money from one account and adding money to another account. You can't just perform one operation. You have to perform both operations together. Imagine you are not performing the second operation. You are just subtracting amount from this account. So what happens? Basically money just vanishes from one of your accounts. And what happens if this step is not executed and you just execute this step? Then $100 just magically comes into your account. Now transactions are summarized using four properties. These are known as asset properties. So it's atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. So atomicity means all the operations in a transaction should be performed fully or not at all. So it's basically all or none approach. So over here both should be performed. You can't just perform one of them. By consistency we mean that when the transaction gets over your database or your data store must be in a consistent state. Basically whatever referential integrity or whatever constraints you are set on the database must have been honored. Isolation means whatever changes you are doing in the transaction shouldn't be visible outside of the transaction until the transaction commits. After the transaction finishes your changes should be atomically visible to the other transactions. Now durability means whatever changes you are doing in the transaction are actually recorded in the particular database or data store. There are two types of transactions you can use in your application. Either you can use a resource specific or a local transaction or you can use a global transaction. A local transaction is only related to a single resource. So a transaction which spans only a single resource is a local transaction. Now a global transaction can span more than one resources. So if any of this resource aborts the transaction, the transaction is rolled back. So typically in your desktop applications, that is your normal Java client applications, you usually use local transactions. And in your Java A server, you use JTA transactions. So basically it's the default transaction in Java A server. It's available out of the box just for your use. And we had actually used a local transaction in a desktop app when we created it and we had used GTA transaction in here in our EJB application. So let's check it out. So this is our EJB application. So let's check out our desktop application. If you see the persistent.xml file and go to the source, if you see the transaction type, it's resource local local. And if you see the persistent.xml of your EJB application it's JTA. So let's forget this local transactions for now and concentrate on JTA transactions. Let's understand transaction demarcation. Now transaction demarcation means when a transaction starts and when it ends. Basically when a transaction should begin and commit. So there are two types available in Java EE. Either you can use container managed transaction or you can use bean managed transaction. CMT means the container has the responsibility of starting and committing the transaction. Bean managed transaction, the user is supposed to begin and commit the transactions. The container managed transaction is a default for your application. So in all your stateful, stateless, singleton or message driven beans, if you do not specify any kind of transaction, all your method in all such beans are executed in a transaction. Whereas here, the user has to manually begin and commit the transaction. There is a special interface provided for that user transaction. Using this we can begin and commit our transactions. So here basically the container does the work of beginning and ending the transaction. Whereas over here you are supposed to start and end the transaction. So let's see an example of both. So let's create a new session bean. Let's name it transbean. Okay. And let's be, let, let it be stateless and let's not create any interface for now. Okay, so this is your bean. So let's add one method to it. Public void save animal. 
so this is the normal code for persisting an animal so before that let's inject entity manager so let's create a persistence context annotation with the unit name specified in persistence XML file control space and it just auto completes for me and then private entity manager okay em now right off the bat we know that this method is going to run properly and this animal is going to be saved in a database because by default all the methods run in a transaction by default the container starts and finishes the transaction as the method starts and ends if you want you can explicitly specify that we are using container managed transactions so we'll use this annotation transaction management and the type will be Beano container and the default type is container so if you want you can mention this it's not required actually now let's first call this method using a singleton class so we first have to inject the bean right ejb and the bean name is transbean okay and then we'll call that method save animal okay now let's save and run this application it has run without any errors let's check the workbench animal select rows and here's the new animal so this was all along expected lines we knew that by default it is this container managed transaction and it starts and stops the transaction as the method starts and ends so let's instead of container specify bean when you specify bean the user is supposed to take care of starting and stopping the transactions we are right now not doing that so let's see what happens we will get an error so let's see and if you see over here we got a transaction request exception so when you specify bean you haven't begun and ended your transaction that is required so for bean managed transaction you have to explicitly specify the begin and commit of the transaction for that we are going to use the user transaction interface so let's use that so basically we inject the user transaction interface using resource annotation now using this interface we are going to begin and commit the transaction so tx dot begin and let's tx dot commit okay and let's just put this in a try catch block okay and let's format this a bit now let's save and run this example run let's check the workbench edit so here is the record so as you can see there is more work involved when you're using bean managed transaction so use the default container managed transaction whenever possible but if you're starting the transaction from the web layer instead of the service layer then you have to compulsorily use user transaction interface